Our uh, leader today is Dr. Ross Sazani from North Carolina State University. She's associate professor in the synthetic and systems biology um, chancellor's faculty excellence program in the Department of Plant and Microbial Biology at North Carolina State. And prior to being the co-deputy director of the STEPS Center, she became and is still uh, the director for the plant improvement platform for the North Carolina Plant Science Initiative. So um, we're going to be in good hands today with Ross, so please come on up and get us rolling. Okay, so I wanted to present you with steps. So this is an image of all of us uh, last year for the site visit. So steps, uh, how many of you have not heard of steps? Raise your hand. Fantastic. So three people. I'm going to give a, a very brief uh, overview of who we are. So we are an NSF. And you can see the symbol over there, an NSF Center for Science and Technology, and uh, is about phosphorus sustainability. Ergo, we are here today. Um, we are 10 uh, partnering university, and we have uh, a vision and we have a mission. And so our vision of 25 in 25 is on the blue box for the few that don't know how and why we are united uh, um, to be a convergence center using phosphorus as a vehicle for convergence. But our uh, vision and ambition is to reduce and facilitate the reduction of 25% in human dependence uh, on mine phosphate, a 25% reduction of uh, loss of phosphorus to our soils and uh, water resources, and we had a great day yesterday. And we put a time mark to it, and it's 25 years. So that is the 25 in 25. Anything you need to remember today is steps as a bold vision of 25 in 25, and then you fill in the gaps of what the 25s are. And so we have a strategic plan, and part of our strategic plan we have a mission statement to generate new knowledge, to innovate uh, new phosphorus sustainability solution, and we're very happy to share some of these innovation with you. And importantly, to train a diverse group of scholars who are equipped to address complex societal challenges as phosphorus sustainability. And so on the left side of this uh, uh, slide, you will see that there are four, I would say, aspects that I'm going to touch on today. The center development, the research, and then I'm going to let my fantastic colleague to dive in more into the research, talk about the stakeholders, because we are in a stakeholder gathering, and then some of the opportunity that STEPS has uh, and have provided, for example, to our uh, scholars. And so the development, we launch officially in 2021, October, when we were among the new Science and Technology Center um, named by NSF. We had a fantastic kickoff meeting here at Arizona State University, and we learned Thanks, Paul, uh, Paul Westeroff, uh, the co-deputy director of STEPS, the <coughs> need, approach, benefit, and competition, the NABC um, process. And then, uh, as I said, we had a strategic plan and so on. We had the site visit from NSF. There's going to be a new site visit this June um, is year three. And uh, among these three years uh, that uh, STEPS has uh, launched, we had done a lot, including, and you have already um, used some of these aspects, the road mapping process, which kicked off uh, um, last year during the P Week, the P Forum and the P Week that we had <clears throat> last year in uh, North Carolina. And uh, recently, we just had a retreat in Florida. So you will hear from me a lot of this terminology as triple bottom line. So we have three geographical footprint sites where we kind of like 
um, have the idea to not only acquire the data, but also a place where we can uh, deploy our new technologies so that we can test them. And those triple bottom line um, geographical footprint are the urban one in Arizona, the aquatic one in uh, Florida for the Everglades, uh, and an agricultural one in North Carolina. Here is uh, who we are. We are um, growing, growing big. Uh, currently, we are at 168 participants, and some of the numbers here includes undergraduate students. So we, this will be the third year that we're having uh, research experience for undergraduate students across all of the different universities that are partner of STEPS. And one thing that I wanted to highlight uh, that uh, we are proud of, uh, and so our proud goes into, we is, is about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, from year one that we uh, sense our center, we grew from 18% to 31% from year one to year two in terms of our diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so those are excellent and success story in terms of how we're gonna go by year five in terms of our bold goal to have uh, more than 50% participation of members of underrepresented minority. And so this is very important and all of the different activity that we take on in terms of K through 12 uh, at all the different uh, partner university. And because we are in Arizona highlighting the bottom Part is 100% of steps K through 12 partner at ASU um, are um, involved in two steps. Okay, so our convergence center, I'm gonna go into the research aspect and I'm gonna tell you what are our, I would say three major research team in uh, steps. One team is uh, about uh, fundamental research that links atomic to micron and longer land scales. And so what you're gonna see there is uh, how we, in STEPS, aim to accelerate material discovery so that uh, we can do better phosphorus absorption. We and try to understand uh, and have success story about uh, how we can decompose organic phosphorus to bioavailable forms such that uh, we can in situ obtain the bioavailable forms that for example are needed by plants to strive in that environment. Fantastic and we heard yesterday uh, from one of our um, amazing faculty, uh, Brooke Mayers, about the biomimicry approaches so that we can really learn from nature, from bacteria, on how to have solution for phosphorus recovery that are sensitive and selective. And then uh, develop experimental platform and uh, combinatorial library for phosphorus binding material in various matrices. And so our matrices can be very concentrated uh, uh, waters, for example, urine, where phosphorus is highly concentrated, low concentration, so water stream, for example, in the aquatic ecosystem of uh, Florida, manure, so a mix between uh, liquid and solid, as well as uh, P legacy from the soil. So those are our matrices for which we are developing um, this kind of uh, platform and combinatorial libraries. And then, uh, importantly, uh, we do a lot in terms of innovation and apply the phosphorus characterization instrument and methods across the whole center. And so AIM-1, uh, you will see at the bottom of all these slides who are the leads in terms of the faculty, and so is uh, Jan Genzer and uh, Yara Ingling and 28 contributing researchers between faculty, staff, and scholar. The second part in terms of research team for STEPS um, is about uh, the human interaction uh, with technology. 
you could have uh, <clears throat> aspect related to how plants can become more um, efficient in terms of phosphorus use efficiency. So that is, for example, space where I um, navigate. I am uh, uh, designed as a plant scientist, so is understanding what are the genetics, what are the capability of plant, uh, and what are the improvement that we can have so that, for example, we can recover it um, and we can utilize the P legacy in the soil. Fantastic work in uh, steps for Team 2 is done for in situ P sensors and uh, integrating to systems so understand not only the sensors for phosphorus in water stream but also we are working very hard to develop sensor for soil which is a great uh, bottleneck into any uh, I would say sensor development not only for phosphorus um, the other aspect are to demonstrate techno-economic metrics at reasonable scale. So the center touches 17 <coughs> magnitude of scale from the atomic, and that was aimed to, to more of the national and global scale. And then aspect related to research team two into steps is to integrate material into processes that selectively separate uh, phosphorus from the contaminants, and uh, how we can uh, recover phosphorus uh, from the different processes and matrices. And so team two is led by Trevor Boyer here at Arizona State University, Owen Duckworth with uh, 33 contributing researchers. Last uh, aspect uh, of uh, steps is about team three, and you will hear a lot from two of the faculty of steps uh, Becca Munich and um, Justin Baker, just a little bit after uh, I'm done talking. And so AIM3 touches on how we, and yesterday we heard that throughout the day, how we can utilize these uh, data reach, and so quantitative data that are there, but also the quantitative data that we are acquiring at the triple bottom line um, site so that we can uh, develop model to advance uh, the sources and the transport knowledge with, and we heard a lot yesterday in terms of the importance of spatiotemporal mapping of where is the phosphorus and what are the forms of phosphorus so that our model can be uh, better predictive. And so aspect here will also touch on the road mapping efforts, you will hear some of the impact opportunity of the road map from uh, Kerry Strickland in a little bit, but importantly is road mapping efforts to understand uh, how and what should be the science and technology that uh, are done by steps so that they can be adopted. Um, and so we work very much with uh, knowledge transfer to translate uh, our science and technology into practices. And so we're looking at the national scale, but also the global scales uh, uh, where we are trying to understand, and when they say we is, uh, for example, uh, the group led by Justin Baker, where we are advancing our understanding of the economic driver and the barrier to phosphorus sustainability. Okay, so having said that, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the kind of innovative research that we are doing in STEPS. And so one is, for example, the way to identify dominant phosphorus sources to waterway with models and stable isotope. And so this is uh, uh, led by Natalie Nelson and Elise Morris at uh, Natalie Nelson is at NC State. Um, um, Elise Morris uh, at Florida and also uh, Becca Munich here at uh, the University of Arkansas. And so it's very much important to really look at how phosphorus um, forms are actually dynamically changing along the waterway so that uh, this information is essential so then when Becca will present her uh, talk, she will clearly point and say those are the data that we're still missing so that our model can be more uh, accurate. Yeah, and so we also have a, a scholar here in the room that can 
answer any question that you may have. You will ask to me, and I will pass it to the scholar and see um, that they certainly know more than I do. The other example that uh, Justin will uh, touch on is uh, advancing the phosphorus modeling and uh, source identification to inform and advance scenario optimization. And so this is very much uh, led by Dan Obenauer that is in the room uh, together with uh, Justin Baker, um, Becca again, um, and then uh, Owen Duckworth and student here in the room as well. Oh, I see also uh, Chris uh, Munich, and if you see his tag, it says uh, Christ instead of Chris. Uh, where is Chris? <laughs> Is, uh, he, it just went away. And we all know what happened to Christ. Uh, so. And so that is the team three and how all the different team one and team two and team three are really integrating <coughs> into each other so that they can inform each other and uh, they have the most and best intervention that can be adopted. So how we, do we go into selecting the project? So all of you, uh, through SPA receives or has access to our abstract for all of our projects. So uh, the first two year of steps, we had about 20 to 22 projects for which you have the abstract and you know where and where, where and how we are advancing innovation in two steps. This is an example of how our research is very competitive in terms of researcher within steps submit their proposal and they are value based on the quality of the intellectual and scientific merit uh, and then uh, um, also aspect related to the steps ambitious uh, broadening participation goals. And so this is just to tell you that there are projects every two years that are selected. They are the state of the art research and project and so this year, uh, that I don't know if you have already the, received the abstract or you will receive the abstract, um, those are the new year three that will move into year four. And so our touching aspect related to, um, for example, biomaterial and proteins to improve phosphate availability to plant cells. So here is how we bring together D new material that we are developing, as well as the biomimicry directly into plant and using plant as a biosensor so that we can see how effectively they are acquiring the phosphate that we are now uh, provide to them in term after, for example, um, making them more bioavailable. Aspect related, for example, to road mapping, maintained from uh, year one and year two, and they moved into year three and year four. So this is also a way that we either continue project from uh, year one and we see whether they are um, needed by the whole community in terms of uh, plant sustainability, uh, phosphorus sustainability. I work in the plant business, so sometimes phosphorus gets flipped around with plant sustainability. And so, and a, a lot of aspects are related also to our scholar development. So, convergent research and developing and applying and studying transdisciplinary team intervention uh, for enabling convergence, which is very important because phosphorus sustainability is a wicked problem and we need to have all different approaches to really solve these uh, challenging aspect. Okay, so, Importantly, and I'm gonna go more into the stakeholder, how STEPS engage with the phosphorus community, obviously through SBA, and we are very proud to partner with uh, SBA and uh, uh, having the guiding line from uh, Jim and Matt uh, and all of you in this room. We do a lot of uh, stakeholder survey and interview and uh, um, we do a lot in terms of a technical working group that uh, are needed in terms of how the technical working group can inform the research of STEPS so that it can be 
better adopted and better applied uh, in response to what are the problems and uh, um, where the different sectors see steps uh, should also direct uh, their attention to. And so example of stakeholder informed proposals are right here. So um, human urine as a boundary object for advancing phosphorus recovery here on um, ASU campus, there is a phosphorus recovery um, system that comes from um, uh, urines. And then I think Doug Cole is in the room. And then uh, one, uh, um, I would say, proposal that has been uh, greatly informed uh, and will continue to be greatly informed uh, is uh, the one led by Doug and is about the next generation uh, of biological phosphorus removals and is um, engineer hyperaccumulators and uh, polyphosphate recovery. If Jacob Jones, that is in the room and is the director of STEP, will be giving this talk, it would for sure present one of the most uh, impressive <laughs> images that they have collected showing how and where, for example, in these uh, bacteria in these cells uh, where phosphorus is accumulated and at what level. So when we're talking about in terms of where phosphorus uh, is located, we go down even at the micro scale looking inside uh, a bacteria. And so if you have any question or if you want to see the image, please go to Jacob that is uh, right there in the room. And then other aspect in terms of stakeholder informed proposal are the one that uh, touch on education and outreach, uh, for example, with uh, uh, Gail Jones. We have a lot of Jones in our centers. So that uh, the other thing is 25 in 25 is steps, and a lot of Jones are in steps. So you can see some of you in the pictures. So how, how we engage with the stakeholders, what are our stakeholders is through SPA, is through stakeholder community group as well as technical working group, as uh, I said, and it's very important so that we can really get uh, um, the science of that to be applied. Here is some of the uh, stakeholder that we have engaged with. Uh, we also engage through a lot of the extension capability that we leverage through the different university, and so, Extension through the land grant mission offers and provides education, training, and outreach to the stakeholder and the community members. And so this is an important reach that we have in terms of uh, uh, what steps, science, uh, and how is uh, um, provided <coughs> through the different, uh, I would say, public uh, space and our community. The other way uh, that we are reaching and uh, engaging with stakeholders, for example, we have this kind of activity. Event Highlights is a partner breakfast that we had where all of the different industry within the ecosystem of the North Carolina Plant Science Initiative came into the building to learn more about how we are approaching the phosphorus sustainability <laughs> from the science and the technology aspect. Uh, we also have a stakeholder perspective through STEP seminar, so weekly, and today is one of the day, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have uh, a um, weekly meeting. We could have at stop at 1 p.m. and join the STEPS uh, weekly seminar today is hands-on activity, and some of these hands-on activity are, for example, when we are um, understanding aspect related to the West African perspective for phosphorus sustainability, as well as uh, uh, Indian community around uh, the nation, like the uh, Willow AGEP project. One way that, uh, and we know we have reached <laughs> farther, is through these uh, road mapping uh, um, and how we engage the stakeholder. I'm not gonna talk much about it because uh, Justin and Dan Carey will spend a significant amount of time uh, uh, describing this, but you were all part of how we identify the different uh, 
impact opportunity, and we're going to spend some time today in terms of food waste, right, Jim? Not on the schedule. Next time, then. Or if you want to stay after 4.30 when we end the session of today. The last uh, couple of minutes is about the opportunity. We engage with a larger uh, group of uh, academic as well as uh, governing. In this uh, picture is, for example, the director of the White House Office for Science and Technology Policy that came and visit uh, STEPS. We have a great opportunity to support and sponsor fantastic scholars. One of the scholars is uh, present here today, Jeshiana Moreira. And so we have uh, heard and we hear from our scholar what are the needs. And so our approach is to provide them with a Step Center Director Fellowship Award that was uh, um, identify as one of the key needs, and that was launch uh, and uh, is named after Jacobs, the director of uh, the STEP Center. I'll leave you with these. Last year we had a great P week, and uh, these are the activity that we had last year during P week. <laughs> We had a uh, different post, we had uh, a presence in the social media, and uh, this year, not next year, but this year is going to be confirmed April 8 to 12, and so there's going to be participation from the European Sustainable Platform, so Veronica is here in the room, I think, so we will uh, partner with that so that we can really launch P Week uh, in an international way. And so a way that we communicate and a way that we are uh, outwards uh, focus is through a fantastic uh, new uh, director of communication, Megan Kittle Autry. Fantastic um, in terms of communication at different level, but also a student-led podcast on phosphorus sustainability. And we have one of the director of this podcast, uh, um, Hector is right here, uh, Hector Fajardo, sorry if I am, um, is here in the room that can tell you more about the phosphorus. And so with that, I'll take any question. I was curious about the education component, yep. and it said you were working in K through five. I'm just curious what you would tell, or whoever's running that program, what you would tell an elementary school child about, about phosphorus. I'm just curious what that looks like. Yeah, so we have different uh, programs, and so some of these outreach are, for example, based on the plant, uh, and the importance of how plants uh, depend on nutrient to grow. Um, other aspect uh, to not scare them, but about uh, the fact that uh, excess phosphorus in water can uh, be harmful. And so example of algal bloom, but also uh, fish kill in a less uh, obvious way. But uh, any, anyone wants to add more? So is um, all the different activities, uh, as well as uh, we had added value. For example, we have uh, RET programs, so research experience for teachers, and how they can uh, bring in aspect of phosphorus sustainability into their curriculum for their um, school. I was just going to add that Tiffany here at ASU has developed a, an outreach demonstration uh, about agricultural runoff uh, using sand in a box, uh, and that's something that there's a new project, actually Gail Jones is um, trying to invest research in understanding how students understand that concept and then apply it more broadly 